All right, I'm going to have the task of trying to cover dermatology in my next, um, Bob says 45 minutes, he cuts me out by 15. So that means I'm going to talk even faster. No, I actually will try to cover the material. Um, just as an aside for boards, um, as anybody that was at Bob's lecture last night, the advice is read the question, get the answer, then look at the picture. Okay, and that's actually true because you, you can, if you take a good history and find out how did the lesion start and how it's progressed, you probably can make the diagnosis. That, and if you can name it in Latin, you've got the name. Um, that's, that's really a little bit of hint about dermatology. We're going to kind of run through some of the more common presentations that you'll see in the office and start with things like acne. Again, a chronic pilosebaceous disease if you will, that begins at the onset of puberty. Why? Because at puberty you get an increase in your androgens. And androgens increase the sebum production, which leads to microplugging, which leads to inflammation and or rupture of that cyst. So you can go from a blackhead, a whitehead, to a red pimple, to a cyst, to a nodule, and any of the spectrum in between. It tends to be on the face, back, and chest, because that's where you have the largest percentage of your androgen uh, sensitive uh, pilosebaceous units. If you see blackheads and whiteheads, we classify them as non-inflammatory. If you see red uh, pimples, um, cysts or nodules, that tells you that you've had the action of P. acnea, the uh, gram-negative bacteria, um, and you um, can treat accordingly. How we treat that looks depends on whether it's inflammatory or non-inflammatory. So the non-inflammatory acne or comiogenic acne, you want to unplug those plugged pores, those micro plugs. Things like retinoids, the retinoic acids, uh, things like different or tazeratic acid all can be used. Um, they're all about equally efficacious. Some uh, people prefer different because it may have a little bit less post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, um, but they're all really pretty interchangeable. Benzoyl peroxide is also a very useful drug. A lot of times patients that you see have already come in with having tried that. They've spent their $35, they've listened to Jessica Simpson, and they bought their, you know, whatever product she's pushing this week. But there's really no difference because it's benzoyl peroxide with a bit of lubricant. Um, the antibiotics usually get added on if you see red pimples in the action of P. acnea. You can use it oral or it can use a topical. And so it does help to decrease the, the uh, bacterial in uh, involvement in the inflammation. And the oral antibiotics that we tend to use are the tetracycline derivatives, um, doxycycline, minocycline. You can use others, but there's increase in resistance, and there's also some significant side effects. The problem with tetracycline for the teenager isn't that it's a good drug, it's that you have to give it on an empty stomach, and that's a really hard challenge on any teenager. You know, they never, they eat from the time they go up to the time they go down. And anybody that has teenagers knows what their food bill looks like. Um, and it also be can't taken with milk. So a lot of us end up using things like minocin or doxycycline because that can be taken with food. And the uh, other drug that's usually reserved for significant recalcitrant acne or nodular cystic and scarring acne is Accutane. It can be prescribed by family physicians as long as you know what you're doing and you have to participate in the iPledge program, which sometimes gets to be such a hassle in paperwork, you just as soon turf them to the dermatologist and let him deal with all of the um, paperwork and computer background. But it can be done. The other thing that you can do, especially in women, is manipulate hormonally with a low androgenic low, um, acti active OCP. It takes eight weeks to develop from microcomedone to complete resolution. So when you start somebody on an antibiotic or you start them on a topical, you don't want to see them back in two weeks. That's about the time they're going to get the worst flare and they're going to curse and swear at you. So give them eight weeks for things to run its course and then bring them back and see if they're actually improving and then follow them periodically. Your other advice to be used would be oil-free, fat-free, low comeogenic or non-comeogenic cosmetics, or preferably limit those. And then some of the other things that patients have done is, that, well, I have greasy, oily skin, I'll wash my face 10 times a day. Not recommended. No proof that it helps. In fact, the more oil you remove, the more oil the body makes. It's kind of like the Lay's potato chip phenomena. We'll just make more. So once or twice a day is adequate, and you don't have to um, vigorously scrub, buff, and polish. 
The recommendations here, again, if I look at, I classify acne into inflammatory and non-inflammatory. If it's non-inflammatory, I start with the topical retinoids or benzoyl peroxide. If I see the addition of the red pimples and the cysts, I may add a topical antibiotic and or an oral antibiotic. And if I have to, I'll go all the way up to the Accutane. If you're going to use Accutane, you discontinue everything else because it does have a significant problem. It is a very good anti-sebostatic drug. It decreases sebum production by about 95%. And therein lies the side effects, dry mouth, dry eyes, dry mucosal membranes, muscle aches, and elevated triglycerides.